All right, this is my Lincoln 225 tombstone, they call it. It was a gift to me roughly 20 years ago, give or take, from my grandfather. Uh, probably doesn't have a million hours on it, but not that I've put on it anyway. I have no idea how old it is. But the cable has seen better days. It's been patched a zillion times. Um, it's, it's just a hot mess. So, and th there's virtually no insulation on it in spots. So, while it hasn't killed me yet, I figured I'd go ahead and spend a couple dollars on this old machine and, uh, and put some new cables on it. So what I've done, let's see if I can read this upside down. Um, basically this is the Optico Temco 2 gauge number two not not two aught but two gauge um, let me show you the difference between two gauge and two aught um, the description on Amazon was a little leery I was pretty sure I was buying two gauge but I got two aught so the one on the left is two gauge right is two aught and it's quite a difference as you can see but per the chart, the electrical code chart, which I, I'll try and post for you. Um, given the, the 30 foot leads that I have at the max amperage of 225 and the given duty cycle that I expect to run this at, this two gauge should be more than adequate or should be just adequate. And because I don't always trust my math, uh, a couple of the forums on practical machinist, uh, said 2 watt works pretty good with their stuff so so anyway I, I went with that um, cost is sort of an issue um, I didn't want to spend a gazillion dollars on an ancient machine so while putting straight 2 gauge uh, would have been the safer thing to do it would have also been uh, a factor of 2 increase in price so anyway I decided to just go with uh, with something that fell within spec so anyway this isn't going to be a complete soup to nuts unbox unbolting thing. Uh, I already started taking it apart. Basically, there's uh, a back panel with a couple bolts along the side, and then this fan fan housing, which doesn't come completely apart without disconnecting some wires. I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Um, let me get a light. So, what we have in here is this is the back of the the amp thing uh, the, of the the dial turn indicator on the front. Um, there's some chowder on the connections. I'm going to clean those up. Uh, just some dust. All in all, not too bad considering this thing has never been cleaned or blown out or anything. Uh, a couple random spiders and whatnot. The fan. I think I think the fan has uh, probably needed some lube or what not. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power wire which is uh, which is also uh, let's see is it not so UL listed approved splice in the middle of it. Uh, it goes from 8 gauge down to 12 3 SO cable. Uh, apparently the 12 gauge SO cable is, isn't adequate to carry this. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, I never noticed any any heating up or anything like that when I used it, but you know it just doesn't doesn't fall within the rated spec. So I'm going to replace it with a cable from an oven. The difference between an oven cable and a dryer cable for those shopping at Home Depot um, is that a dryer cable is is rated for roughly 30 amps, as I understand it. However, an oven will handle 50 amps. So so I'll show you that plug a little bit later, but I'm going to go got a, a, a 10 foot oven cord off of Amazon which is going to come in here and get replaced there. Make sure when you get yours it's not plugged in when you're doing this. Um, anyway, so I'm going to replace that and then also I've got the two leads here. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one is the negative which one is the positive from this side. Um, I'd have to chase it down. Anyway, I'll explain that later. Uh, but in the near term I just want to give you a before picture of what it looks like. Uh, the transformer 
cooling fins. Um, not a lot of time in construction, just stamp steel, uh, giant transformer, and gobs and gobs of paint. Uh, but it seems to have held up well. Now, again, I, I'd assume this machine is upwards of 35 years old, give or take. Um, so anyway, that's it for this section, and I'll come back later on when I have it cleaned up and or uh, I'm replacing the wires. So you know, for my machine anyway, the side towards the on switch is negative, and then this side is positive. So that correlates to back here is this tang coming up is the ground. Now you see the plus symbol there, that's the positive uh, coming in through those holes. Uh, what I'm going to use coming out of these holes, it's probably a little bit overkill, but I've got these grommets, these strain relief grommets. Um, they, they fit pretty nice on the two gauge wire. So again, a little overkill, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. But while I'm here, I realize that it's pretty easy to take the front apart. I've got just a couple screws here and there. Uh, to actually disassemble the switch, the on switch, the amperage switch, and then two bolts down there at the bottom to undo the transformer. And while I'm in here, I mean, even though this has some sentimental values the way it is, uh, there's no point letting the rust take over. Uh, this does stay inside, but you know, this is South Florida and it's 100% humidity all the time. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this whole machine down, which consists of those few bolts here and there. Uh, take the housing off, keep all that the same. I'm going to probably use citrus strip, try to strip the paint off, then wire wheel it. Um, and then if that doesn't do it all, then I'll throw it in a sandblaster. But anyway, uh, just get all the rust stopped. Maybe give it a coat of that rust converter. Um, not sure if that stuff works or not. Um, and then paint it probably red. We'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, come back when there's more progress. All right, this has got a little bit more serious. Um, th like I was saying, the little bit of rust on there, you know, it's not something I want to come back to in a year or two and say, geez, I really wish I'd taken that apart. Um, anyway. Some of this isn't ideal, but throw a little paint on it, you know, probably make it look nicer. And I'm not a good painter, I hate painting, but again, just a matter of slowing the rust down this humidity. Uh, I'll take you outside and show you the citrus strip. So, let's see what we got here. The um, citrus strip, again, from Amazon. Uh, I did half of it. So, from the front, you can sort of see the split right down the middle on this side. Try to put it on liberally. Uh, Keith Rucker from VintageMachinery.org had used this on one of his lathes and it seemed to work pretty good. So anyway, uh, I figured I'd give it a shot. I did use it on this little uh, cheap metal shear that I'm cleaning up. Uh, again, see the humidity I was talking about. That's some surface thrust on there. But it did a good job taking off uh, what looked to be a pretty shitty coat of paint. But um, anyway, we'll see here if it... No doubt in my mind, it's going to... Uh, not take everything off, but what I'm looking for is to save some save some elbow grease on the grinding part of it. Uh, keep it from having to huff all the paint fumes and all the other shit that goes along with it. Try to get the bulk of it off and then clean it up. Um, so anyway, this is probably going to be it for a while and I'll come back to it in a day or two and um, do the other side. Alright, so it's been, I don't know, 24 hours or so since I citrus stripped this thing. Uh, that's what it looks like when it dries. I don't know. I don't know if this will work. I did a little test spot on this side and a test spot on this side, and it seemed to come off faster with the citrus strip. But Not a huge difference, but uh, I don't know, it can't hurt, that's for sure, because it was peeling off a little bit more on that side, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish shift to strip in this thing, and uh, 
come back later on when it's done. I'm going to get back to the welder project today. I've got the case all cleaned up. I'm cleaning the bolts up now. I'm soaking in this container. This shit actually works really good. I'm super surprised at how good it was. I should have got a before picture. But these were, were horrible. They look like that rusty ass razor blade before. But anyway, so I'm really surprised that that came out. I'm going to paint those black probably and then start to uh, reassemble this thing. Uh, so far, what, what I did off camera was I replaced the original cable, which was probably, I don't know, six feet long or something with a 10 foot oven cable. Uh, the difference between ovens, or wait, no, this is a, yeah, this is an oven cable. I think ovens are 50 amp, uh, dryers are 30 amp, and the dryers, from like Lowe's or Home Depot usually have like an L shape here. Oh, let me get that in the frame. Like have an L shape on this ground, or neutral, I should say. This would be the neutral, and then these are both 110 legs. Um, but anyway, this is a 50 amp. That's what this calls for, is a 50 amp cord. I mean, uh, I don't exactly know the math about how they get 225 amps out of 50. But it, anyway, uh, that aside, I'm gonna put the camera down, clean up the workbench, paints these bolts and bring you back later. Right. <clears throat> now to get the the fan off Instead of fucking with these wires, I just cut them, and now I'm putting connectors in them. Now, in case you're wondering, this wire here is an alternative wiring for 480 volt, I believe. Um, According to one of the other blogs I read. So it's supposed to be capped off and look like that. I didn't fuck anything up. Well, at least not that. So that should be ready to go back together. If you might remember, I marked my ground here, black wire, and then the positive goes up to the sort of the screen here. To the back of the dial, the amp gauge. Um, so I think we're about ready to go back together. However, before I do all that, um, I think I've got to test a couple things. What I've done, I'm not sure this is such a good idea now, is to, the only indication that I have if this machine is on or not is if the fan is running. So if the fan, or if the shop is loud or something like that, so if the fan quits working, or if the shop's too loud and I can't hear anything, then I wouldn't have any indication that this machine's just sitting there on. So what I wanted to do was add a light and this is a 
a 220 volt light AC um, that I can connect into this and then use my uh, anyway, one of the drill bits, I'll show that later. Uh, punch through the case so that I've got some indication of what's going on. Which means, fuck, I should have tagged a wire out for these. But anyway, maybe I'll get to that later. Anyway. This sort of goes against my better judgment, but what I'm going to do is I've got the switch here, the lead, the, the component that I was going to use here. You know, they'd wreck into one another. I'd have some crazy, it'd, do, it'd be more jacked up um, than it'd be worth uh, to try to adapt those, so I'm going to skip that part. But it appears that the best, most probable place to put this and not have any problems is right above the switch. Um, it sort of makes sense. And it's going to be wired right in with the fan. So much shit on the workbench, it's hard to tell. But anyway, I've got those tied together, so the fan will come on when the switch is on, the light will come on, so if the fan ever fails, I'll have some indication of what's going on. But now I'm going to take all this hard work and paint prep and everything I did and punch a big ass hole in it. I should have done this at first, but anyway, that's what happens. Alright, there we go, our Amazon LED 220 volt button. Now, uh, going to start assembling the fan and whatnot. Um, and I'll bring it back. So here's the painted up fan shroud. I've got the fan, which I pulled off of there with a little, a little puller. Um, I used that to get it off there. It didn't take, I mean, it probably could have been done with a couple screwdrivers, but anyway. Uh, and it seemed to have this internal ring. I'm not exactly sure, like, did they epoxy that on there? slid off and it didn't gall this up too much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with a little sandpaper and then I'm going to use some two-part five-minute epoxy that I have somewhere um, to hold this together anyway that should that should do I also put some of that rust reformer on here just to keep the windings I did navel jelly I rewrapped this with some of the uh, some of the old school tape this is actually new new stock but uh but it's Sort of the vintage cloth, uh, tarred electrical tape. It's pretty heavy duty stuff. Uh, I'm rebuilding a vintage fan that needed it. So anyway, I figure it's pretty durable. So I rewrapped the windings. I think this is a shunted choke uh, induction motor, I believe is what they call it. It's uh, very similar to this other one I have. However, this one's 110 volts. This one's 220. And uh, anyway, I'm just gonna. This one seemed to work fine, so I'm just gonna run with it. Right, so sandpaper doesn't really work for shit on there. It's too hard to get at least my hands in there. What works way better is a really fine wire br brush on a pneumatic die grinder. I got in there and got just about all of it out of there. Uh, there's a little bit of smooth. That's just me spraying the electric cleaner off of there again. But anyway, that's that's cleaned up pretty good. Uh, I'm going to try to get the rest of the chowder out of there so it uh, works freely. I'm not going to put any dielectric grease or anything because I think it's just going to attract dust. Uh, I'm just going to leave it dry. Uh, then hope for the best. And if I need to come back later on put some graphite in there or something, maybe I will. Uh, but that's for a later date if I decide to go that route. All right, I'm getting ready to assemble this thing. The shop is too small for me to sort of set it up in any neat angle and, and have a decent shot of this. But anyway... I'll bring you back later on as I assemble it. I've got it back together. There was some time lapse ahead of this, but my problem now is that the cheapest route I could go, and you know, it's not always about price, it's just not paying through the goddamn nose for some of these SO cables. The SO cable 15 feet was like know, 60 bucks or something like that, but I could get this cord for 10 feet long. Which is as long as I need for, I think it was 12 or 15 bucks with the, the outlet on it and everything. So, what I need to do now is sort of adapt the, the initial one had a round cable, the original SO cable. And now I've got this flat dryer plug. So what I need to do is make a strain relief because you can see up in there, oops, too far. The ground, that bolt also doubles as a strain relief. So, 
I need to fabricate something that holds this cable without cutting in to it and uh, allows it to come out of that hole so I'm gonna do that. Took a piece of square stock and cut it out so it fits on that hole there and then it sort of straddles the cable there. So when that's on there that should be that should be pretty good. As long as you're not a meatball tugging on the thing, it should be more than enough. Alright, so there it is. My little holder thing. Took an extra screw, which wasn't ideal, but anyway, it'll work. Alright, this is the Lincoln put away. It's like super dark, sorry. Um, on my little welding cart. Uh, anyway, it was a neat project, but I hate painting. So anyway, came out pretty good. Thanks for watching.